Passively detecting windows and adding failure conditions to our payloads for the USB rubber ducky, this time on Hack 5. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen, following up on my previous episode talking about the Detect Ready extension that allows you to make your payloads for the USB rubber ducky so much faster by getting rid of that old, you know, 10 year old plus delay 3000 at the top of your payload and instead of waiting three seconds to systematically discover whether or not your system is ready to accept keystrokes and then hit them with those keystrokes, getting it down to 25 milliseconds in some cases, that is huge and it allows us to do our keystroke injection attacks so much faster. So on your next red team engagement, if you're doing a little pen test, if you're doing a physical and you get access to an unattended machine, you may only need two or three seconds to pull off some magic. And today we're going to take it a step further and make it not only you know faster, but more robust, okay? So you will remember in the uh, previous episode here that we were taking a look at this extension, uh, Detect Ready, that allowed us to make this here payload, the, uh, the payload that blinks the caps lock key on, the, uh, on your Windows target with props to Atomic ZSEC for creating the first uh, version of this. And we've been iterating on this payload, making it better, and we put in this extension Detect Ready. And so this is going to detect, well, hey, when is our, uh, our computer ready to accept keystrokes? And then we're going to be able to send it those. Well, what's really cool about the way that this extension works is it's actually going to have an iteration limit. It's going to try this 120 times and if it doesn't after, you know, with a 25 millisecond uh, uh, delay in between all of these, see this delay, response delay, this define response delay right there. So it's gonna do this 120 times. And if it doesn't get that caps lock back, it's just going to assume, okay, this system must be ready by now. It's been 3000 milliseconds and it will go ahead and continue. And that's important because if you've dug into either the online course or the book or just docs.hack5.org and dug into all of the cool stuff that the new USB rubber ducky can do with DuckyScript 3.0, like keystroke reflection, you'll know that not every computer system will actually uh, reflect the lock keystrokes back to the USB rubber ducky. On the vast majority of systems, we're going to get caps lock, scroll lock, num lock back to us, and then we can do really cool things with that. Um, but if it's like a, a Mac as an example, it might not do that. And so we just wanna have a failure condition. And this is the thing that I love about payloads. Really robust payloads have failure conditions. This is a, an example of an extension that has a failure condition, meaning it says, hey, if I haven't heard back from the system in 3000 milliseconds, just go ahead and finish the keystroke injection because that's what you would have otherwise done with the original USB rubber ducky, you know, circa 2010 anyway. So we can actually now take this a step further because we can exploit that failure condition. You see, uh, as I talked about in the guide over here at uh, hack5.org, and by the way, you just get over these product guides and find yourself a ton of awesome reading about the various different products. Uh, the uh, Detect Ready extensions come in a couple of different flavors. So we saw it in action, you know, taking only 100 milliseconds on Kali and taking 400 milliseconds on Windows XP and 25 on, on modern Windows systems, but we can also use this to passively detect a Windows system, okay? Because we know if, uh, based on a number of factors, we can actually determine, is this a Windows system? Even before we do any keystroke injection and based on that, we can then do our delay. So there is actually a special version of the extension called Passive Windows Detect that comes with the delay built in. So let me get rid of this one and we'll do extension, passive, and you'll see there's both Passive Detect Ready and Passive Windows Detect. That's the one we want, Passive Windows Detect. I hit enter, it adds it in there, and I can go ahead and expand this and see what's inside. And it says, it is going to be a fully passive OS detection. And uh, all we have to do is put this in line right here. So at the top of our payload, where it is, and it's gonna go ahead and do our boot delay, but it will also set dollar sign underscore OS. It's gonna set it to Windows or not Windows, which is pretty cool because 
you know, this payload that we've been working on this whole time is a, 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 it targets Windows, okay? And I put that in the little comment block at the top. It's called the Fast Windows Caps Lock Blinker. It's inspired by an awesome payload by Atomic ZSEC, and it toggles the Caps Lock key on and off with a little bit of PowerShell. So that's great that, you know, we let you know, you know, the pen tester, that that's what this does. And you can read through the PowerShell and see how this works. But what's gonna happen if you try to run this payload now and you go up to a machine that isn't a Windows box. You probably don't want it trying to open the Windows Run dialog and inject PowerShell because it's not gonna know what any of that means. So we can actually use this payload, this extension right here, to take a look at that variable that is declared, that dollar sign underscore OS. In fact, there's inside the extension a little bit, a little example here of how you can use this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this example in this uh, rem block. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and minimize that just to clean things up. And you'll see here, you know, what I immediately do after we've detected that the system is ready is, you know, GUI R and start injecting that PowerShell. Let's make it better. Let's inject this and, you know, um, give me a sec while I clean this up. Uh, if I used Vim key bindings, I would be much faster at this, but I don't, so. Uh, so we're gonna use this if statement and an else statement and obviously we're gonna enter if, and our if is just gonna say, hey, if dollar sign underscore windows, that internal variable that is set by our passive windows detect extension is set to windows, then, well, as the example does, it'll say hello windows, and then, you know, if not, it'll do hello world. Well, we don't want it to do hello windows. We actually want it to do this entire section of payload. So I'm just gonna go ahead and yeet this right into there. And because I'm a nice guy, I'm gonna select all this and kind of tab it over and there, that looks nice and pretty. And then else, if it's not Windows, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna stop underscore payload. Hold up, that's a mistake. Stop underscore payload is a command that actually stops all further payload execution, which means that nothing subsequent would run. So everything I'm about to say about turning off attack mode and all that jazz, fine but you would probably want to put the stop underscore payload at the bottom or just mix it all together. Anyway, now back to bu Bubble Darren. And we're going to do attack mode off, which disables the USB rubber deck the device from that system. So now we've added a failure condition. If we wanted to, we could even do LED underscore R, you know, make the LED on the USB rubber deck R if you can see it. And now we have a much more robust payload that's going to passively detect windows. It's going to only take, say, 25 milliseconds on a modern Windows machine, and it's only going to inject this if it actually is a Windows box. So let's go ahead and do that and see how this looks in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug my USB rubber ducky into my development machine here, and I'm going to very quickly press that button, which is going to put it into arming mode. So it's plug in, wait, you know, half a second, plug it in, uh, hit the button, and I see here I've got my ducky drive, that's fantastic, that's what I want. Okay, we'll generate this payload, and I'm gonna go ahead and download this and save it, and I'm gonna re replace the inject.bin that's currently on here, great. And now, because I am a good Boy Scout, I'm going to go ahead and actually safely eject this. Your mileage may vary. And there we go. Now, we are ready to go and deploy this. Okay, so, I have two target systems on my desk. I have a Kali Linux box, and I've got a Windows box. So obviously, let's try the Windows box first, because that's what we're expecting to do this on. I've just plugged it in and immediately, how quick was that? I just plugged it in and now it's it's off doing its thing and the caps lock key is blinking. That makes my heart, that, that warm fuzzies all around. Well, what about our Linux box? So let's come over here. I'm on my Kali Linux box. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in to this system as soon as I find the USB port. Oh. You're a USB-A laptop. Well, I love that my USB rubber ducky has both A and C ports. There we go. Plug you in. And hey, nothing's happening. And that right there is exactly the failure condition that we want. We don't want it to do anything. If I plug this into my Mac right now, 
Obviously, it's not going to detect as a Windows machine, and then it's not going to inject any keystrokes. In fact, if I wanted to, I could make this a little better for my social engineering. And I'll, like, instead of you know stopping the payload and doing attack mode off, I might want to just go ahead and do attack mode storage. And there we go. We're just an innocuous little flash drive. Hey, look at that. That right there is an awesome element of the extensions and the fact that you can passively detect Windows by really just you know checking the, uh, the, the, the host request counts and tell if it's a Windows box. So it's that simple. You can add this to your payload right now to make it both faster at injecting keystrokes on Windows systems and more robust so that you can actually have a failure condition if in case this is plugged in, this is perfect for those deployments where you litter a parking lot or the conference room and you're not actually there, you can make sure that you're gonna get the system that you are specifically targeting. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this. And I really encourage you to see all of the other awesome payloads that are also taking advantage of this and other really creative stuff that you can find at payloads.hack5.org. Go ahead and dig into Payload Hub. There's so much good creativity there. And if you wanna share your creativity, that's where you can submit your payload. Get in on those awards for this year. Uh, and it's so much fun. So anyway, with all of that, I'm Darren Kitchen, once again, reminding you, trust your technolust. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.